In 2017, about half a million deaths in the United States had hypertension as the primary cause or a contributing factor. Nearly half of adults in the United States, that's about 108 million people, have high blood pressure. And only one in four of those adults identified as having high blood pressure actually have their blood pressure control. And about half of adults, that's approximately 30 million people in the United States with blood pressure of over 140 over 90 have their blood pressure not controlled in the sense that they are either not taking any medication or they are not prescribed any medication to begin with. High blood pressure also costs the United States about $131 billion. This is based on data averaged from 2003 to 2014. Those are some staggering numbers and it definitely warrants talking about hypertension or high blood pressure and that's exactly what we're going to do today. By the way, my name is Kweku and I'm a, I am a pharmacist. On this channel, I do medication reviews and I talk about issues like this, issues concerning your health. So if you're new here, you're welcome. Stick around and let's take a deep dive into hypertension. So first of all, what is blood pressure? Well, blood pressure is the force that is exerted against your blood vessels as the blood flows through the veins. You would imagine that, yes, the, the body definitely needs some pressure to circulate the blood around the body because the blood is one of the main transport mechanisms by which nutrients and oxygen is circulated around the body. It is believed that if you join the blood vessels in an individual back to back to back, it forms a vessel that is about 60,000 miles, which will probably go around the earth about two times. So you see that there is definitely some pressure needed to move the blood around and move all the nutrients and the oxygen that it carries. It only becomes a problem if this pressure is sustained or increased above ranges that are considered to be normal over an extended period of time. Emphasis on extended period of time. So you don't necessarily go into a pharmacy or a doctor's office, check your blood pressure, it is elevated and you conclude that you are hypertensive. No, that's not how it works. It has to be over a considerable length of time. So the question then comes as to what is this normal range? Well, normal range depends on a lot of factors, including age, gender, among other things. However, there are some accepted numbers that generally across board are believed to be normal. Now, there are two sets of pressures that when you see a reading, normally you see a top number and a bottom number. The top number is called a systolic pressure and the bottom number is called a diastolic pressure. The systolic pressure is the pressure in the vessels when the heart is actually beating, when the heart is actually pumping out blood into the, the arteries to be circulated around. And the diastolic pressure is when the heart is actually at rest in between beats. That's how come you have two numbers, the top and the bottom. So what then is the normal range of blood pressure? Well, we're going to go according to the American Heart Association's numbers. With these numbers, you are normal if you are considered, if your systolic pressure is less than 120 and the diastolic is less than 180. Use that as end. So both conditions must be satisfied before you would be considered as having normal blood pressure. It is considered elevated when the systolic is between 120 and 129 and the diastolic is less than 80. We start getting into the hypertensive stage at uh, stage one if the diast sorry if the systolic is between 130 to 139, or the diastolic is between 80 to 89. So in this case, you see it's either or. So if one of the conditions is satisfied, so if you are 135, uh, but your diastolic is less than the 80, you are still considered to be stage one hypertension. Then the next stage, which is stage two, or is when you are 140 or higher in the systolic or 90 or higher in the diastolic. And it is said to be a hypertensive crisis which warrants you calling your doctor immediately if your blood pressure is higher than 180, that is the, the systolic is higher than 180 and or the diastolic is higher than 120. So these are some numbers and like I said, these numbers may not they are not hard and steadfast. They are a very good guideline for the most part, but certain individuals may not necessarily may be diagnosed differently, even though their numbers may not exactly fit these ones, but based on their history, their doctor will make a judgment call as to what to do next. So the next question is, what causes 
hypertension or what causes high blood pressure. It's interesting to know that the majority of the cases, some estimates about 95% of high blood pressure cases or hypertensive cases have no cause or they don't have any identifiable cause. You cannot put your finger on one thing and say this is what is causing hypertension. Such hypertension is called essential hypertension. You know, why it is called essential hypertension, I have no idea. You know, when I think of essential, I think of something that you need, you know, food, water, air, but um, high blood pressure without known a reason or known cause is described as essential hypertension and that's what it is. However, even though a lot of the blood pressure cases or hypertensive cases don't have an identifiable cause, they are setting agreed upon risk factors that if you have those risk factors, you are more than likely to have high blood pressure or to develop it down the line. So what are these risk factors? The first and almost obvious one is age. Generally, as we age, we tend to, our blood pressure tends to go up. That's because, you know, our arteries lose elasticity and stuff like that. So it's just a part of the aging process. As we grow older, we have a tendency to develop high blood pressure. Interestingly, younger males are more likely to develop high blood pressure, but after 65, women are more likely to have high blood pressure than any um, age, age group. So women over 65 are at a higher risk of developing hypertension relative to the, the, the male counterparts or relative to any other demographic with respect to age. The second risk factor is obviously diet. You know, a diet especially high in sodium and low in potassium increases your risk significantly of developing hypertension or high blood pressure. Sodium actually is found everywhere. Sometimes when we think of sodium, we only think of the salt that we put in our food directly, but far from it, it's found, in, it's so common, it's so ubiquitous. And not to go too much into sodium, I actually have a whole complete video where I discussed, you know, sodium its sources and how it affects blood pressure. And I'll put a link uh, up there so you can check it out or and put a link also in the description if you want to take a look at it. Another risk factor that we can look at is race. Race tends to play an important role in determining whether somebody will develop high blood pressure or not. It is generally, high blood pressure or hypertension is generally more prevalent in people of African descent or black people relative to white people. And also high blood pressure or hypertension seems to have an earlier onset in black people than white people. So you, especially for young black people, it is relatively common to see a young black male with high blood pressure compared to his white counterpart. So race definitely plays a role. And talking about race, that leads me right into the next one, that is genetics. You know, hypertension for some reason tends to run in families. So if you have a family history of hypertension, some grandpa, grandma, uncle, aunt, somebody in the family had high blood pressure, you are also generally at an increased risk of developing high blood pressure. So you need to take all the necessary uh, precautions. Another risk factor we're taking a look at is obesity. Generally, the bigger you are or the more you weigh, the more work the heart has to do to pump this oxygenated blood all over the body to supply the body with all the nutrients. And that puts a lot of strain on the heart and the blood vessels. So that tends to be a risk factor for you know, hypertension. Another thing about obesity is that obesity is generally associated with high cholesterol. You know, most obese people generally tend to have high cholesterol. Cholesterol, as probably already aware, plays a significant role in that it, it forms plaques or it layers the inner lining of the arteries, thereby reducing the volume or reducing their circumference. So it's like you have a tube you've narrowed the tube and you're forcing the same amount of fluid to flow through a narrowed tube. Obviously, that fluid is gonna flow at a higher pressure than if you have a tube that was, you know, had a bigger diameter or a bigger circumference. Another risk factor for high blood pressure or hypertension is smoking. Nicotine in itself raises the blood pressure temporarily. So you take, you, you, you take a puff of cigarette, you, you know, you, nicotine gets into your system. Naturally, that raises the blood pressure. Over a long term also, what nicotine does is that it makes, it damages the blood vessels, the arteries. It makes it lose its elasticity. So 
at somebody who doesn't smoke is more likely to have blood vessels that can be easily dilated and opened so the blood can flow through it versus somebody who smokes. In a, in a person who's been smoking for a relatively long period of time, the blood vessels loses uh, or they lose their elasticity. So the blood is flowing through the vessel, but the vessel is relatively stiff and therefore the blood flows at a higher pressure relative to what should have been the norm if the person was not a smoker. And another thing also, alcohol. I mean, since we've talked about smoking, we might as well throw in alcohol as well. So excessive alcohol intake is also correlated with high blood pressure or hypertension. So it is advised that uh, if you are a woman, no more than one drink a day. And if you're a man, a maximum of two drinks a day. Um, if you were to ask me, I would say, if you have a risk of high blood pressure if it runs in the family, I would actually even cut that back further. But those are the guidelines to go by. I know that I cannot convince everybody not to drink at all. If I could do that, I would do that because drinking and smoking come with a, a lot of um, complications. But the reality on the ground is that people cannot stop doing it. So moderation is the key here. Another risk factor for high blood pressure is stress. The more stressed you are, the greater your blood pressure. And this is, you know, this is something that is very common knowledge. So uh, whatever is causing you the stress, whatever is the stressor in your life, if you can handle it, that tends to be the underlining cause. If you can handle that stressor in your life, I don't know what it is, marital problems, job issues, whatever the situation may be, once you handle the stresses, generally your blood pressure tends to respond as well. So why is all this important? Why do we even need to control our blood pressure? Well, number one, a sustained high blood pressure or hypertension increases your risk significantly for cardiac events like stroke, um, you know, heart failures and heart attacks. So it is definitely in your best interest or in our best interest to keep our blood pressure within the norm. Another complication of high blood pressure is aneurysm. You know, aneurysm is when a part of the blood vessels begins to bulge. It forms something like a balloon. You know, it begins to bulge. And if this, uh, this ruptures or this breaks, it can have very serious consequences. Hypertension also obviously lead to issues with sexual dysfunction. There can be issues with the kidney, kidney failure. There can be sight problems. There are a whole host of things that can happen with uncontrolled high blood pressure. So it is definitely in our interest to know, you know, when I was given the statistics, a lot of people are walking around with high blood pressure that don't even know or that don't even care about what is going on just because it is so it, it, it doesn't have any symptoms so you just go around walking and not even knowing what damage it is causing uh, to you so what is the way for it well my very simple tips is that number one you need to know where you stand a lot of people like i said earlier are walking around without knowing where they stand these days it is very easy to know what your blood pressure is just walk into any pharmacy if you don't even want to purchase your own cuff walk into any pharmacy CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, Walmart, wherever, most of them have these kiosks where you can just go sit down and take your blood pressure. So that's the first step. You need to know where you stand. And as often as you can do it, the better for you. Number two, once you know where you stand, then you have to have an action plan. You know, is this so high that you need to see your doctor immediately? If so, then do so. Um, or is it in the manageable range where maybe you can start with diet and exercise? And that is obviously where every, all of us need to start from, diet and exercise. Diet helps a lot. Exercise helps significantly in managing you know, your blood pressure. And number three, if you see a doctor and you are prescribed medication, please keep taking the medication. A lot of the times I see scenarios where people are prescribed the medication. Yeah, they start and for whatever reason, they become non-adherent either because their blood pressure has dropped to acceptable numbers and therefore they've decided that they don't need their medication again. Forgetting that it is the medication that is actually helping them to lower those numbers. And some people, just because of life, the everyday, the hustle and bustle of everyday life, you know, put that on the back burner just because you don't feel the symptoms. Hypertension is described as a silent killer. It kills you silently without you knowing. By the time you realize, it's probably too late the kidney has been damaged, you're having eyesight problems. So I would highly recommend that let's take good care of ourselves. This is something that can be managed. Uh, although for, for the most part, if you don't know the underlying cause, you cannot completely eradicate it, but you can manage it such that you can live a long, healthy and comfortable life. Thank you so much for staying through. If this video helped you, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and leave me a comment as well. And I'll see you on the next one.
Take care.